So first of all, my obeisance to my Guru Pada Padma, Nitalila Pravista, Om Vishnu Pad, Astotara Shata Srimad Bhakti, Vedanta, Shlabhamana Goswami Maharaj, and also to my, sorry, Sanyas Guru, Nitalila Pravista, Om Vishnu Pad, Astotara Shata Srimad Bhakti, sorry, Vedanta Shalanarayana Goswami Maharaj, to their lotus feet, I offer my unlimited obeisances, persuaded obeisances again and again. <laughs> Sorry, and after that, also my obeisances to So, Prapuja Charan Shaladama Dara Maharaj. And now to the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis present here. So all the devotees absorbed in the mood of Mahaprabhu. To so all the affectionate mothers, to the feet of everyone, please accept my humble obeisances, my uh, obeisances accordingly. So for the past few, past few days, we've been hearing a lot of Harikatha. Very beautiful way, Shla Maharaj has told you Kata. Guru Tata, Bhakti Tata, Prema Tata, Krishna Tata, all the Tatas. He described in sequence to you. So, Sambandha Tata is the first of all Tatas. And then Abhideya Tato, and then 
प्रयोजन तत्व इन द स्पिरिचुअल स्वयंतर स्पिरिचुअल रैम स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ वी शुड नो अबाउट संबंध अगेन नॉलेज ऑफ रिलेशनशिप If you have someone again, no general relationship, you will never fall down. How to obtain someone again? We have to take shelter of the bona fide guru, and he'll give the, us the someone again. So, if we don't take shelter of the bona fide guru, or if we don't take diksha mantra, never ever. Will be able to have this knowledge of relationship, sambandh again. Sambandh in Sanskrit means it's like directly bound bondage. Like for example, bibaha bandhan is another name of the wedding ceremony. Means woman and man are bound to each other. So the sambandh again is given. This relationship. Mantra uh, is spoken by the Brahmana, and also the witness of the fire, the fire sacrifice, and then uh, wedding mantras are recited, and then the groom and bridegroom they it's created a relationship between them. Then slowly, slowly, serving each other, they will start having this possessiveness. To each other, so it's not only because of the wedding ceremony, but because of the. Actually, okay, you got married, but. If after wedding, woman would reside in one house and her husband in another house, would they love each other? No. Because the love and affection develops by serving each other also. Save everything. Tendency to serve. So the more our sambandha relationship is thick, condensed, in the same way, our prema for Lord will also increase and be condensed more and more. Just like, for example, if you are boiling the milk, boiling, boiling, boiling the milk, the milk will be really thick. In the same way. You can make many kinds of foods from the milk. For example, sor. I don't know the meaning. Chana, another word. I don't know the meaning. Kir. Gurudev is mentioning the kinds of uh, sweets and other things, uh, substance that you can make with the boiled milk. And the anyway, what I want to say is that. The more sambandha you have, then you have the increased tendency to serve. So how to develop sambandha again with God? Because we haven't ever seen God. Have we seen God? Have you ever seen God? Who has seen the the the, the winds? Lilananda Taligam. So how to know? How do we know that? That the wind is there. We feel hot, cold. Isn't it? We feel hot. We feel cold. But the wind is cool or hot? Like if the wind is with the hot, like some heat, then we feel like uh, hot air. And if the wind is mixed with like Cold or ice or something, we say cool, cold air. But this is a matter of feeling, right? The wind is a feeling. And this is a material things. But imagine Bhagavan, he's transcendental. He's transcendental.
God is the supreme conscious being between all the conscious beings. So if you say water, 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 will the water come to you? No. Because water is some material substance. H2O is a molecule. Hydrogen and oxygen together, then it becomes the water. So the water is a molecule. There is some, some molecules that are only one atom and some other molecules they have different atoms combined. When we used to study, so, so the science explained, the chemistry also explains, physics also. So the water is a sub material substance and unconscious. So there are Chetan Padartha, conscious beings, and Achetan Padartha, unconscious beings, unconscious things. Everything in this world is the Achetan, like unconscious, you know, the inner, inert matter. But in the spiritual world, everything is conscious. In the spiritual world, everything is conscious. We must know all this. Why I'm saying? The names of a Bhagavan is a transcendental sound, Shabda Brahma. If when we speak things in this world, then this Shabda Samana, material sound, but in the transcendental world. Shabda Brahma, transcendental sounds. In the material world, we have material language. Then we can understand each other. All living beings, they have language, you know? And they speak to each other, they understand each other. For example, you can see the ants, they are walking, walking, they meet each other, they speak something. Like even the insects, they speak to each other, you can see. Sorry, I couldn't get exactly, but yeah, Gurudev is saying many different languages. Like for example, those who are blind, they have their own language, you know? And those who are dumb, who cannot speak, they also have some language with signals and indications. And like insects also have languages, their own language. So, all the things in this world, they are material, like material language also. But in the transcendental world, everything is transcendental. We must know this transcendental things. We have to have the Samban again, not knowledge of relationship with, it, with these transcendental entities. We have a relationship with a mother, father, wife, kids. He is my mother, he is my son. Is my father. We have so many relations, right? But we have to have relationship, transcendental relationship with Bhagavan. Those who have someone again, they can give us. Those who don't have someone again, they cannot help us. Sit. 
some bond that means complete directly bound or com bound com uh, completely connected to Bhagavan. So that person who will give us this somebody again will unite us directly, bound us with Bhagavan, connect us with Bhagavan. That person who does this to us with Bhagavan. For example, in the time of the wedding, you know, how the Brahmana is speaking a mantra and the wife and husband, like the bride bridegroom hands, are bound by a thread, you know. Then their clothes are also bound and they have to seven times around the fire. Oh, seven wives for seven lives you'll be wife and, and husband, people say. But you may but it is not true actually. Suppose if the wife dies first then husband before. Then you think in the next life he will be waiting for you to marry you. No. People are just rumor saying this, like rumor, but it's not proper, saying that seven rounds around the fire, it's like seven lives. So if your wife is Jatila Kutila, imagine seven wives, you have to have a Jatila Kutila wife, like a terrible wife. Your life will be destroyed, huh? No, it's not like this. The other day I said, if you have pious deeds, you have a pi uh, religious son. According to your destiny, you get a wife. Just explains. So when I marry people, uh, according to the Vaishnava traditions, some people say, Maharaj, you said that, like people say that seven rounds around the fire means for seven lives will be husband and wife okay so this is your first life together or your last life together then so this is your first or this is your last marriage together okay for example you got married just recently you got married with the witness of the fire you did a parikram around the fire <laughs> husband and wife together are like bound the, the sari is bound in the dhoti, dhoti of the man and they are uh, circling the fire, right? So people ask me, Maharaj, tell me. So I married to him. This is my first life marrying him or my last life marrying him? Because we had to be together for seven lives. So I, I tell a joke. I say, look, you can realize yourself. If you're really friends with each other and real nice marriage, you understand? This is your first life with him. But if you're only quarreling all the time and arguing, you understand this is your last life together. This is just a joke, okay? Actually, Janma Mritu Bibaha, birth, death, and wedding, marriage, they are in the hands of God. What did I say? Janma, birth, Mritu, death, and Bibaha, marriage. This is not in your hands. Mahabharata explains there is a story in the Mahabharata. Birth, death, and marriage is not in our hands, in the hands of God it is. Where will you die? Who knows? Many people think, oh, I will, I will, I will, I was born in Vrindavan, I want to die in Vrindavan. I've seen this a lot because I'm living in Vrindavan for the past like 45 years. So I see. The person wanted to live in Vrindavan, but in the end, the person gives up his body in Delhi. He couldn't give uh, die in Vrindavan. Maybe somebody has come from Houston, from the United States. She came in the one. She came in the time of Parikrama. She gave her body in Vrindavan. I, I tell you, two years ago, two years ago, the Parikrama was happening in our uh, in our Vrindavan Parikrama. Maharaj also was with us. Shatrita Goswami Maharaj. So we were in the Mansarovar. Harikatha, in the middle of the Harikatha. Devotees sitting down in the Mansarovar. It's a very pure place, Mansarovar. See. 
Suddenly, one person just, uh, his head fell like this. He just f uh, like, uh, died in the middle of the Harikata, sitting down. So that person came for the Parikrama. He was not thinking, I'll li give up my body in Vrindavan. He just came for the Parikrama. So the death is not an ordinary thing. I mean, the death of this person was not an ordinary thing. Because he was able... Like he, it was really auspicious for him to die there. So I tell, birth, death and wedding, when marriage, these three things are in the hands of Bhagavan only, not in your hands. So, for example, you can see in the in Parikrama, sorry, if you... Okay, that person was... Okay, so I'm telling something practical, you saw this. Who was there in Vrindavan? Ah, the, the, the said, oh, he was just next to me, that, m that man who died in the middle of the Harikata. He was very close to the, the speakers, in a, uh, leaning on a pillar, sitting down. Hearing Harikata with the Japa Mala in his hand, suddenly he just became like dizzy and he uh, died. Give the old honey. So for the spiritual life, we need to know the Samband again, knowledge of a relationship. Who is giving us the Samband again with God? Who is uniting us with God? Guru Pada Padma. Guru, Guru Deva is Sambanda Pradatha. He gives us the relationship. Mahaprabhu, with his own mouth, he said, Mahaprabhu, with his own mouth, he said this. Rupa Goswami, Rupa, listen. There are unlimited jivas, not only one, unlimited, billions and billions, millions, zillions. There are many jivas without a body. There are many jivas wandering without body. We cannot see them with our eyes. They are just like dust flying around. So one jiva got our, this body, now we have. So, many, many unlimited jivas are going from body to body and according to the karma, the cycle of repeated birth and death, like in a whirlpool of karma. Sometimes we go to Sarga, sometimes the earth planet, sometimes we are servant, sometimes we are king, sometimes we are men, sometimes we are woman, men, sometimes we are devas, deitas, demigods, demons. So, doing this, when the good fortune arises for the jiva, so bhagya. Bhagya ban means a very lucky, fortunate living entity. Then we will take the shelter of bona fide guru. It's not something also that can be forced. Actually, it's something about the sukriti. When sukriti is mature and accumulated, hearing harikatha, when the sukriti will be nourished, so yeah, accumulated and matured, then you get the association of sadhu. So, so many words we, s we use. Kacha guru, paka guru, like no mature guru and mature guru. But Shasta is not saying these things. Guru, actually, gu means darkness and ru, light. So the guru will destroy the, the, the ignorance in our heart and the uh, darkness and will give us the light. What is the ignorance? We think, oh, I'm in this world and we're thinking we're the body. Swarupa Brahm, full of anatta. Swarupa Brahm, Asatrishna, 
and other Bali and Aparada. We are all in this. We don't know who are we. We think we're the body, but by the Harikata, the Guru slowly, slowly, he let, he makes us he makes us know. Like if I ask you, what is your name? What would you say? What is your name? So, you tell you to say the name that your parents gave you. But what is the name of your soul? Do you know? No. What is the name of the soul? That you don't know. You know the address book, like like people used to have this, no? The address book, all with the telephone numbers of all your friends in a book and the names of your friends. But what is your own address? So I want to tell a beautiful story about this. Once a sadhu, a saint, he was giving very beautiful harikatha. Then hearing the harikatha, everyone was so uh, attracted to him. He described the beautiful form of Krishna and everything. Beautiful verse, expanding the beautiful form of Krishna. Krishna has a beautiful tilak in his forehead. Bhagavan has a beautiful tilak in his forehead. Uh, aren't, aren't you ashamed of not having tilak in your forehead? Bhagavan wears tilak. Those who don't wear tilak on their forehead, they are actually making, having a hellish life, like they are going to hell, or they make the death their place. So you have to know this. So because it's not only listening one time. This is true or not? We have to tell again and again, again and again. Then one day this will make an impression in your mind. For example, how to make a mark in a in a stone. You know when you when you many times if you put a clay pot in the on the rock in, like in a stone <laughs> like if ev generally if you try to risk a stone with a clay pot actually the clay pot will break but if every day every day you just put the clay pot in the same time in the same place of the rock or the stone it, it slowly slowly it become a circle a mark on the stone where you always place the clay pot you understand generally the stone would break the clay pot if you try to make a mark at once but if every day every day every day you just put the clay pot in the same place the mark will stay so that's why people say maharaj why are you speaking same kata of yesterday until you this has not created an impression in your mind i will continue speaking This is true or not? So, I'm not speaking about your because you're shy or your shyness. I'm just speaking what is benefit benefit for your benefit. What Guru Vaishnava says is actually for our benefit. Just like the mother and father, they have so much love and affection for the do, for their sons and daughters. Sometimes they maybe even slap the kids sometimes they with so much love and affection the parents also feed the children the same way Guru Vaishnavas they are our ever well wisher they really are our greatest friends Parambanda our real friend 
a real mother and father. That person will give us prana back to towards Shri Krishna. Shastra explains. So the friends in this world, they're okay, they're friends, but they're not, uh, not your param bandhu, be best friend. Who's your best friend, Guru Pad Padam? Guru Deva. I'll tell you the truth. I came here to Bengal. I'm giving speaking Harikata to you. I didn't come here for, to collect anything. Ah, uh, money. I came to take your money. No, I didn't come for money or anything. I'm not telling for my own ego or anything, but by the blessing of my parents, I got, I studied, I went to the school, university. And no, no, sorry, sorry, forget the leads. Gurudev said. Okay, since we took shelter of Gurudev, I just think about how to help other people. So what is the real help? If you make one jiva attain Bhagavan, this is the best parupakar, best um, charity work. Like one jiva, you take out one jiva from the prison of Maya and make this jiva attain the feet of God. There is not... There there's, doesn't exist any better charity for a person. People of this world, they don't understand this. Ah, the person doesn't have a blanket. I want to give him a blanket. Okay, this is okay, giving these charities. But the best charity donation is if you take, remove, um, liberate the person from the prison of Maya and make this jiva attain to, to God. And my guru told me, and this was like a resounding vibrating in my in my ears again and again this is what my guru Deva told me about giving their life to help others and i was this was coming again and again in me so that our uh, our best friend is someone who gives us krishna bhakti he is the best friend he's the parents the mother and father that person who gives us prema bhakti to krishna the Guru. I'll tell you the truth. Who loves you really in this world and like this? Actually, all the love in this world. It's not real love. Some illusion of Maya, nothing else. I'll tell you. If I don't tell the truth, You will think that the, the known truth, the lie is true. Bhaktivinoda Prabhupada said, we must speak the truth. Who loves you the most? Guru Pada Padma. He really loves you the most. So I want to tell you a very beautiful story in this regard. I heard this from Guru Vaishnav. So I'll tell you. I heard from my Guru, so I'll tell you. Once, one uh, lawyer, I think lawyer, like a very, um, like a knowledgeable man. He was very intelligent. Every day he used to come to hear Harikata. Every day he, he would hear Harikata. So three, four years passed. And then he took. So he, he wouldn't take Diksha or Harinam, but he, every day he used to come to hear Harikata. Coming and going. But he was not doing anything else. It's only this. Some people, they come also for many years. They are here for many years. But they are not doing anything. Like they are not uh, taking initiation and practicing also. So once Guru Deva said, Look. I really love you. And the love I have for you. No one has, has the same love for you as I have. Every, everyone else loves you with uh, their own motivation, like cause. 
So when the cause is destroyed, no one will love you. These other people will not love you anymore. So this, I think, lawyer, he said, the man said, look, but my wife loves me so much. No one in the past and the future has loved me, loves me like my wife. When I come back from the office, as soon as I come home, my wife, she takes my coat, she helps me taking off my coat, and also she opens my shoes, and she fans me also, and then when I go to the office also, She make, gives me nice tiffin with nice uh, food. When I'm going, she always follow me for ten, ten steps. She's saying bye bye, tata, isn't it? She also says, "Be careful, be careful, be careful." So she always says this to me. Go with care, like take care on your way, and come back quickly. Surely, sh I don't know about how it's family life, but this is true or not. The wife will always say, go, be careful on your way, okay? Take care. And she also will say, come back quickly or see you quickly, okay? Come back quickly. So, so much love and affection, sweet word. She's giving me this like the cloth of her affection, let's say. When I eat, she's with the tip of her side, she's fanning to me. So in your house, your wife does this or not? Okay, not my ma not my subject if your wife is doing this or not, because this is Kali Yuga. No, so many women, they do that still. Many women, they still serve like that. If you do it or not, this is not my subject matter. But, so the husband, this man told that sadhu, look, Guru Deva said, no, no. Actually, the service your wife does is because of she has selfish desires. But the love I have for you, Guru said, look, oh, lawyer, the love I have for you is nisarta, means unconditional. There's no condition. But the love your wife has is not like this. And one else also. She'll only love you if the cause is there. If the cause is destroyed, she won't love you anymore. Oh, how, how to prove that? The man asked. If you can prove this to me, the lawyer said, if you can really prove this to me, I will give up everything and I will completely surrender to your lotus feet. If you are really saying, that you love me more than my wife. I will give up everything and I will completely surrender to your lotus feet. Then the Guru said, okay. Then, listen. The Guru said, okay, look, today, go to your house, chant this mantra, specific mantra. Then the Guru gave a mantra to the man. You chant this mantra and what will happen is that your hands and legs will be like uh, hard and straight. But your your eyes will remain open. You'll be able to see and also be able to hear. But you, like your body will seem like it's dead. Like your limbs will not work. You'll be able to hear and to see also what's going on. But you'll be like dead. And you see who really loves you. Okay. So it was like 10 p.m. She, he came back to his house. Then, as like every day as usual, his wife prepared his food, fed him, he ate, and then he sat down, uh, he laid, laid down on the bed, and then he chanted that mantra Guru had given him. So, immediately, his hand legs became like straight, stretched out, and like really straight, stretched out and hard. And his eyes were like upside down. So the wife came like, what happened? Oh my. What happened to my husband? Then immediately, everybody gathered around like because everyone was in shock. 
all like neighbors everyone gather like uh, what happened what happened they were all, they were all crying in distress you know how women cry very loudly sometimes women after the the husband dies they start reciting like the life history with written like a poem speaking the life, uh, life history of the husband and wife when the wife becomes widow i don't know but they do this like crying and singing singing in a poem way what will happen with me oh that day so the woman is like reciting crying and singing like just like the poem of Rabindranath Tagore it looks like Rabindranath Tagore the poem has the poet has possessed the wife body I'm not staying in Bengal but you know because you stay here you see this a lot so the wife is crying crying and reciting the life history of she of her and her husband together after the husband dies right so so the doctor came and said oh yeah his heart has failed he, he's that he's dead Everyone started crying. Uh, then one person said, he, he was in temple before coming here, right? He came from the temple, right? Yes. You know that sadhu from the temple? He's Sarvagan Trikalagga. He can do something to help. If you'll be able to give life back to my husband, like to the husband, uh, we'll be eternally indebted to him. So the Guru, okay, so they called Guru Deva. Guru Deva knew everything what was going on, right? So Guru Deva said, yes, look. Yeah, do one thing then. I, I can save him, but you have to do one thing. What? Look. <laughs> You have to take his body out of the room of the house, okay? Okay. But the lawyer, remember his hands and legs were like stretched out and hard. Like completely stretched out around his body. You see like Gurudev showing, look. He was like this, his body. Like completely stretched out hands and legs. So to take out his body from the room, how to take? Because the, the, the door of the room was narrow. So they said, okay, cut the door. But then the wife said, look, yesterday or the day before, we spent 2,000 rupees just to make this door, like this construction of this, we just, no, 10,000, sorry, 10,000 rupees. We spent to do this, make this door, and now the sadhu is telling I should cut the wall, like uh, break the wall, to come out with his body. It's better. Let's just cut, cut off his hands and legs. Wife said, "Let's cut off his hands and legs. Then we can take his body outside. He's already died. He's already dead. He's not alive. So, okay. First of all, my husband died. Now." You want me to just waste 10,000 rupees that I just recently used to rebuild this wall. The man was hearing what the wife was saying, right? Then, then the sadhu said, okay. 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 I, I, I don't want you to waste 10,000 rupees. Okay. So what is, a, what is more important? 10,000 rupees or your husband? Right? But anyway, then he said, Look, I'll chant a mantra and he'll be able to come back to life. But there's one condition. What? For him to come back to life, for the lawyer to come back to life, in, uh, somebody has to sacrifice their own life for him. Then he'll be able to get his life back. So who would give his own life? Like the wife was crying so much, right? Oh, you left me. What will I do without you? I have given up everything for you. So somebody, so they told the wife, 
can you give up your wife? Then the wife said, but I have two small kids. So, one baby has one year old, one year old, and like these very babies, like who will be able to take care of them? I cannot, I cannot. She said. So then they asked the old parents to, of that man, will you be able to give up your life? Then the husband, sorry, mother and father said, whole life we were working to give him um, food and, and, and education. Now we are old and still we want our life. We cannot give. So no one wanted to give their life. So the story is long. I know time is up. I'm just making it short. So who would give the life? Then the sadhu said, okay, nobody wants to give, okay, so some I can make him alive, but I just need one person to give the life and then he will come back to life. So who will give the life? Because nobody wanted to give their own life. So So, so generally, before the wife was saying, oh, now because you're dead, I will throw myself in the fire. I cannot live without you. Before, like some, But now when Sadhu is asking for her life, she's running away saying she cannot give her, her life. Then Guru said, okay, I will give my life. Oh, yes, Maharaj, this is true. You don't, you don't have anyone. If you die, no one will cry for you. It's okay. Yeah, you can, you can have your life. Who will cry for you? Because we were born in a very far place, there's no one here like that like cares for you like this. So yeah, Maharaj, please, you give your life because your uh, your mind, body, everything you have is for helping others. So yes, you give your life to help my husband. Uh, you can die. But if my husband is alive, then we'll have money and we'll be able to maintain our lives. So he was listening to all this. The lawyer was, remember, he was hearing everything. Then he said, okay, the guru said, okay, I'll give my life. Then the guru put his hand on the that body of that man. He chanted some mantra and immediately he wo rose, like uh, stood up. So Shasta explains, he's your best friend, he's your mother and father, that person who will give you Krishna Bhakti to the lotus feet of Krishna, who will give you Prema Bhakti. All the people in this world, actually Gurudev gives us everything and he loves us the most. This is true. You can test this in your life, make a test. Everyone in this world, in family, in life, they are all like illusions of Maya. Who really loves you? And who do you who do you really really love to actually? Because Bhagavan is in the body, that's why you like the body. You like the body because the soul and God are inside the body. When the soul goes out of the body, you don't even keep that dead body in your house immediately. You take the body to the cremator crematorium and cemetery and burn the body. Then you make the pinda chuti, like pinda dan, so the oblations, funeral rites. That moment you're cutting the relationship we have, we have with that person. But the relationship we have with Guru and Bhagavan, it's, a eternal, it's an eternal relationship. My Guru Dev used to say, to deliver one disciple, the Guru will come back again and again, life after life, to deliver that disciple. The Bengali Kirtan explains. This bona fide Guru, not about Kancha Guru, Paka Guru, or mature, immature Guru. Some Sahajas, they say, immature Guru or mature Guru. This is, doesn't exist, these things, they're saying. This is not in the Shastra. Kancha Guru, Paka Guru, like, 
mature and immature guru. No, this doesn't exist. I told guru means guru means ignorance and dru light. Guru give us the light. So the guru will accept the disciple and manifest bhakti in his heart slowly, slowly. How? Through the Harikatha. Guru will establish the seed of Bhakti Lata in the heart of the disciple, the creeper of Bhakti, seed. So when you plant, like your agriculture, you cannot just throw the seed anywhere. Like before sowing the fields, you have to cut the jungle that is in that field. Then you remove all the like stones and other things. Then you have to do the um, plowing of the fields. Here they have even a tractor. Anyway, you're plow plowing and preparing the fields, fertilizing the field, the soil. Then you sow the, the fields. You know, don't need to speak too much about this. You know all this. So the guru, what does he do? What is the duty of guru? The guru will prepare the heart of the disciple to make that heart pure, pure. We have so many material desires in our hearts, so many. We don't want to hear Harikata. We want to hear other Katas. We want to, he to hear self-praise and criticizing of others. We just This is Maya in our ears. Why? We are very eager to speak about others and criticize others. If it's a Satkata, we are eager. But if it's Krishna Kata, we feel so much headache, like, we don't want Hari Kata, but we want other Katas. Premananda Thakur explains in this song. If it's going Hari Kata, you feel so much headache. Oh, my head is aching, oh my. But if it's an asat kata, then it will be alert if it's not harikata. Especially if it's criticizing of others. You are very eager, like your ears are even like alert. What happened with that sannyasa? He got married. What happened to that sannyas? He did that. What? What did he did? What he did? What happened? So you want to hear. And also another thing we want to hear, another we want to hear our own self-praise, like somebody glorifies us. So we are very here to eager to hear these two things. This is called Atma Slaga in Sanskrit. Like self-praise. Or to hear someone praise you. Okay. Compliments. So we want to Ah, what did I do? Eh, and we want to self to praise ourselves. Like in Hindi we say, me, 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 like I, I did this, I did that. You know who says me, me, me? The goat. They're always saying this, like me, 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 this sound. Eh? So we want to criticize others. Sorry, we want to hear about others' criticism. And we want to self-praise and uh, hear others praising us. So what I'm saying is the Kata of Bhakti Vinotaku and Bhakti Santa Prabhupada. In the Anubhasha, or in the commentary Amrita Prabhabhasha of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, they explain. So I'm just telling you what Bhakti Santa Prabhupada and Bhakti Vinotaku said. If we become completely detached from these two things, then our ear will be purified, and then we will be eager to hear Harikata. I this, I did that, not, not, uh, not this. I didn't do anything. I don't do anything. Bhagavan, he does.
So this song explains, this is a Bengali song, really from Ram Prashadi, explains this, yes. Why I am saying this? We must attain Sambandha again. And the Guru Pada Padma will give us Sambandha again. How? Through the mantra. Through the mantra. What is the seed of Bhakti Lata? Desire to serve to Krishna. Remember that. Later I'll ask you. What is Guru giving us? The tendency, the desire to serve to Krishna. Because we only have desire to serve to Maya now. We have the Atma Buddhi, bodily conception. We want to serve Maya. But Guru Pada Padma is giving us through the mantra, Guru Mantra, Gopal Mantra, etc. Through the mantra, This mantra enters our ears and comes to our hearts. This is the duty of Guru. So, that person who is a bona fide Guru is someone who has attained perfection in the mantra. Some person has realization. Some person who has done bhajan and sadhan. That Guru can give us. But that Guru who doesn't did, didn't do bhajan. Bhagavad Bhajan, didn't do Bhajan in Sadhan. That person who didn't really properly change the chanted the mantra and followed all the behaviors. If you take a mantra from this kind of guru, you can never attain perfection. In Bengal, there are many people saying many different things. I sometimes hear what people in Bengal, they are creating. So you chant the mantra, I think Deke or something, I didn't understand exactly what Gurudev is saying. But you chant some mantra they are saying and you just chant this mantra and Bhagavan will come. So they created some mantra, Deke or something, then you chant this mantra and the date will appear to you. No. The mantras are described in the scriptures and you have to take that mantra from someone who has attained perfection in the mantra. Someone who follows everything. Someone who has realization. Those who have realization and can give realization to others. Those who have no realization, they cannot help you out in that matter. Many sahajis they give material examples and actually saying opposite things according to the Vedas. They say opposite things of the Vedas. For example, you came to the shop to buy something. You're not seeing if the shop owner has a good character or not. You just buy the thing from him. You're not seeing if the shop owner is good or not. You just came to buy something. This is a material example and actually doesn't say what is proper about the scriptures. This example cannot be used according to the Guru. Actually, the Guru must, yes, have all the proper behaviors in. The Guru has realization. He has to, must be Acharyaban, following all the behaviors. This is the Guru. Someone who, that person who doesn't follow all behaviors, who doesn't have realization, who doesn't do bhajan, who, d who has, haven't served his guru, this person will never be able to do the pose of guru or make the role of guru, never. If the person has served Guru Dev in the Guru Parampara, two kinds of Guru Sheva. One, Bopu Sheva, serving physically, the body of guru, and Bani Seva. That person who has kept the kata of Guru in his heart. My Guru Maharaj used to say, it's very difficult to find a bona fide Guru. And, and also, maybe you have a bona fide Guru, but you don't. So, 
many people say, oh, I'm Guru Guru, but they're not bona fide Guru. Maybe. Even the rickshawalas, they drink alcohol and they call each other Guru sometimes. So this is not Guru, like. So there are many people, like maybe call themselves Guru or Guru is something really actually important and very rare, a bona fide Guru who really follows all the behaviors, all the, he, he himself, he performs bhajan, he has attained the perfection. He has the, all the conceptions of the previous acharyas. We must uh, take a shelter of this Gurudev. Like for example, the Sahajiya say, you go to the shop and you buy something, you're not checking if the shop owner is good or bad person, you just buy that thing. No, but this example doesn't uh, relate to the Guru Tattva. The Guru must be Acharya Bam Purusho Baida. Means a person who is Guru, he must be Acharya Ban. Acharya Ban means somebody who is following, like Acharya, following all the behaviors. He is teaching by his own example. He is doing bhajan. He has served, he's serving and serves his Guru. Two kinds of service, I told. One, Bopu Seva, and another, Bani Seva. Prabhupada said, actually, Bani Seva is more important than Bopu Seva, higher than Bopu Seva. Okay, to cook for Gurudeva, to cook, uh, wash Gurudeva's clothes. This is Vopu Seva. But Vani Seva? Keep the Harikata Guru in your heart. Consider it according to the Shastra's conceptions. And then preach that in, in the whole world. This is Vani Seva. Prabhupada said, Brihat Maridango Seva. What did I say? Brihat Maridango Seva. This Maridango, the drums, cannot reach many, like the sound cannot reach so much far. But the books and preaching Harikata, you make this Harikata reach far. So the importance of Vani Seva is higher even than Vapu Seva. So I'm not saying one is like higher or inferior, but anyway, Jagud Guru Shila Bhaksana Prabhupada said, how Bani Seva is really important, really lot of so important. So yeah, serving Guru, Bani Seva, following all behaviors, Acharya for... If you preach without following the behaviors yourself, the, the, all the rules, then actually this is karma. So you're not doing yourself, do not doing the bhajan, you're not chanting your Gayatri Mantra, you, ain't, you are not chanting holy names and you're telling others to do that. Maybe you even recite shlokas of the pe scriptures, but you're not following the behaviors yourself. Taking mantra from this person will not be effect effective at all. So the person, some people only follow the behavior, don't preach. Some people preach, but don't follow the behavior. We must b do both. In this way, you are the guru of the whole world. This is uh, one shloka, Chaitanya Charitam. So, those who really follow all the behaviors, like the rules, they can really preach. This is Gurudev. He's a person who has done the bhajan. So, before accepting a guru, you should know that if that guru is proper or not. Just like before drinking water, you should see if that water is good for drinking or not. That person, is that guru is chanting holy names or not? He has done bhajan or not? So, you have to see that. Otherwise, you're going to the sahajiyas or no benefit for you. And the mantra we have to accept also is written in the scriptures. Which mantra? The Shastra explains. So when you take the Diksha, the Diksha mantras are written in the Shastras. But the, when the Guru gives you the mantra, he has attained perfection in that mantra. Then he establishes this in the heart of the disciple. So the bona fide disciple should follow the instructions of Guru and then the mantra will also appear in your heart. So we have to know all this. We have to practice also. All of you do bhajan. 
Get attend to realization. Chanting holy names. Ne step by step, you attain realization. I have to finish the Harikata. So, just about the Sambandha again, I spoke today. The Sambandha again, we have to have with God. So, who will give us the Sambandha again? Guru Pada Padma. Guru Pada Padma will give us the Sambandha. Don't worry. So, the more your Sambandha again is uh, thick, condensed, the more will have mamata possessiveness to God. Like the more you have a relationship with Guru, this relationship will be like transferred to Krishna. So if you don't have Sambandha relationship with the Guru, you'll never be able to come close to God. So the Guru is not only a media, Like for example, the Brahmana. The Brahmana, the Brahmana got you married to your husband and then you don't have any relationship with that Brahmana anymore in your life. Like the Brahmana it was just the media or like he took the donation and he doesn't have anything to do with your life anymore. But the Guru is not like that. The Guru is... The relationship between Guru and disciple is eternal. Nitya. The lotus feet of Nitai and his servants are eternal. Some people say the Guru is only the media, like the medium, but this is not true. With the association of the Guru, actually the uh, uh, relationship between Guru and disciple is eternal. Do you understand? Narutam Das Thakur said, what did he say? Our relationship with Guru is eternal. Today, today, tomorrow, always. He's always with us. So this Sambandha again we have with Guru will also be transferred like to the spiritual world. Guru Dev has Anitya Sarupa in the spiritual world, the form of a manjari. So under, the so under the guidance of Guru Rupa Manjari, you will serve Radha Gobindo. You will not serve independently there. I'm talking a very high class thing, but it's true. So when you know your eternal form, and also you will know the eternal form of Guru, Guru Rupa Saki. In the Giri Gucha, Giti Gucha, it's written, songbook. Guru Rupa Manjari Dhyan. Guru, Guru, you can read. So, our relationship with Guru is eternal. Nityananda is Akhanda Guru Tattva. We have this eternal relationship with Him. Under the name of Guru, of Guru Rupa Manjari, We'll be able to attain the service of Shmati Radka. We must know all that. So our relationship with Guru, and this Sambandha relationship with Guru also will be like transferred also to Bhagavan. So you have one of these uh, eternal relations with Krishna. And if you connect with Guru, he will take you to Bhagavan. Slowly, slowly you realize all this. So you can have like Shantadasa Saka Vatsalya Madhuri with Krishna. Like for example, when the mother, when the mother has babies, automatically she has love for them and wants to serve them. 
it's not something forced or it's obvious like just when the relationship is there she obviously obviously serve her son for example the cow the cow is licking its baby calf when he's born so he has so much sevavriti so there is no mother training and father training this is not given it's natural when you have a baby you have this relationship so immediately you have this natural tendency to serve some things are like innate or inherent or spontaneous comes from the inner card of your heart and is coming automatically outside it's not something that can be taught so in the same way when you have this relationship with guru this will bring you to god in the spiritual world you will go there under the guidance of guru rupa sakhi you'll serve bhagavan there many katas so you have to have this sambandh again and how to get that by the mantra given by the guru if you don't haven't taken like you, without taking the mantra properly from a bona fide guru never you have sambandh again that's why mahaprabhu said wonder in this material world fortunate jeevas they get the bhakti lata beach from the bona fide guru taking care of this seed watering it with shravan kirtan okay guru gave you seed so what is the seed good guru gave you who remembers the desire to serve to krishna krishna seva basana you forgot so the seed of ba- the creeper of bhakti is krishna seva basana desire to serve to krishna or also called shraddha the faith this is the duty of guru slowly slowly by the hari katha the guru makes creates this faith in the heart of the disciple spiritual faith paramartika shraddha not mundane faith first we have this mundane faith lokik shraddha So, two examples are given silkworms and the spider so the silkworm makes that house yeah so one spider so yeah one example is the silkworm the silkworm is making the house and he's becoming bound that house that he makes and then the person puts him in the fire and gets his house to make silk but the spider is free in that web she's independent so that's why sadhu be careful all of us be careful like you think you're free but maybe you'll be in the bondage so i'm telling honestly so with affection for the people you have relation material relationship but you must have sorry so that's why there mounds and faith and spiritual faith material relationship and then comes the spiritual relationship like a shraddha has to grow increase slowly slowly and a lot of faith you have to have in the instructions of the guru so if you have that slowly slowly you have to also continue chanting the mantra that give you gave you so you didn't take the seeds It's like you took a seed but you put the seed in your pocket or in your wardrobe the seed will never sprout yeah the guru gave you yes 
in the day of Guru Purnima, in the Keshava Jigorya Mat, thousand people used to come. Gigantic queue. Everyone was taking Kantimala and Japamala from Gurudev. But no one was there later on. Like they didn't come back. So this was just to create some Srada, but actually, some faith, but actually, with this mountain faith, Lokik Srada, slowly, slowly you'll be able to get the spiritual faith. Then you'll have faith in the Guru. Chanting the mantra, like step by step, then you will be able to realize your spiritual form of your soul. There's a process. Srada, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, then Narta Nivriti, Nishta Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhav and Prem. There's a sequence. How can we enter a spiritual life? There's not only, it's not only chanting holy names. Like, oh Gurudev, I'm chanting holy names, Namiyaj. Then Gurudev says, bring some water. Then the disciple runs away. Then the disciple comes back. What is the water? Gurudev, I forgot to ask you one thing. Which kind of water do you take? Cold water or hot water? Or uh, warm water? Gurudev said, okay, just bring normal water, like cold water. No need to search for hot water. Okay, where's the water? Oh, Gurudev, I forgot to ask one more thing. What? Gurudev, you drink water from the tap or from Bisleri? Like from the market, like uh, mineral water, bottled water. Then the Guru thought, oh, maybe it will be hard for him to get uh, water from market or anything. So just bring water from the tap. Where is the water? I'm thirsty. I Gurudev, I forgot to ask you one more thing. What? How should I bring the water? In a glass? In a cup? Then Gurudev said, just that which is there, this cup which is there, just bring in the cup. Okay. Five minutes later, come back, that's up. What is the water? Gurudev, I forgot one more thing. What? Should I bring the water on a tray? I was holding in my hand. Gurudev said, look, don't need to bring any water. So we must have possessiveness toward Guru. And this love and affection chanting slowly, slowly, like step by step, by the mercy of Guru, our seed will sprout. This is what is described in the Shastras. Everyone clap, please.
रही Very beautiful. So for some days here, we'll speak about Guru, glories of Guru Vyasadeva also. For two, three days more, we have to hear about Guru Tato and Vyasadeva, everything. Who will give us mercy in this material world? The Guru. Who will give us shelter? The Guru. Who will give us shelter? We must know about this. We must hear about Gurudev. It's very good. We must hear about Gurudev. We must hear about Vyasadev. So, we must hear Harikatha and chant the mantra. The mantra you have received. Chant it. At least chant Harinam. If you cannot do anything, you have to chant Harinam. Harinam will do everything for you. Oh, I'll give up everything, some people say. For example, someone who is sick. What will happen? First you'll be cured from the disease or first you take the medicine? So you are like uh, sick. First you'll be cured and then take the medicine or first you take medicine then be cured? No, you take the medicine to be cured, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the medicine is Harinam, Mahaprabhu said. Mahaprabhu himself has said. Oshadi means the medicine. The great medicine, Harinam. Chanting Harinam, step by step, you'll see that your disease will go away. No need to do anything else. I'm not saying to eat fish, onion, garlic, and also chant. I'm not saying this, no. Eat fish, stay with uh, wife uh, illegally with ladies, and chant Hari all. Sahajiya say this. I'm not saying this, but they're saying this can eat anything. Mahaprabhu told that we should only chant holy names. Right? No, I'm not saying this. Yes. So chant holy names, you have to have your mouth purified. You should not make the, your, your mouth a drain. In the drain is only going stool and feces and you should not make your mouth a drain. You should make your mouth purified. So, that mouth is chanting holy names, you should not put it inside this mouth, onion, garlic, fish, meat. So, when you take the medicine, there are some rules you must follow. Okay, you took the medicine. It's actually not enough to, to be cured from the disease. For example, if you have cough, cough. Then you take the cold syrup, cough syrup, cough syrup to make your throat better. Cough syrup. So you take the cough syrup in the shop to be cured from the cough. But there's one also prescription. What? You should don't not take yogurt, yogurt, isn't it? Because the yogurt will make your cough increase. So you're drinking the cough syrup, but at the same time drinking, taking yogurt. What will happen? Actually, our cough will increase even more. So, Harinam is the medicine. But at the same time, we must follow the rules. Gaur Premanande. Take Mahaprasad, all of you. Do service. 
Like don't eat other things. Like don't eat. You should have to serve the prasadam. Like don't eat rice. Oh, eat prasad. No, here we say serve. Serve the prasadam. Prasad seva. Like so we should not eat, we should serve the prasad. We should serve the Mahaprasad. Serve. Not eat, but serve instead. So our Vaishnava language is so pure and special. So we don't say eat, we say serve the prasad. So all of you please serve the Mahaprasad. So so one day you come to the temple, you try to learn these languages and this proper way how to deal with the things. Not like, oh, I'll eat this food. No. Serve Mahaprasad. Gaur Pramanandi.